Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm very happy to be with you again for another practical video. Imagine you receive a project in a factory where you need to design an electrical panel to control conveyors using relays or contactors. The goal is to build a system that allows the conveyor belt to move in both forward and reverse directions. In this system, electric motors drive the conveyor belts. Our objective is to control these motors so that we can change the direction of movement. By the end of this project, we will have learned how to control an electric motor in both directions and successfully design this electrical panel. As you can see, the conveyor is currently moving forward transporting objects in that direction. Now, I will press the stop button and the conveyor stops. If I press the reverse button, the conveyor moves in the opposite direction. Again, I press the stop button, then press the forward button to restart the forward movement. Let's start designing the electrical panel together. In this project, I will control the motor using contactors. There are two main challenges in this setup. One, the power circuit. This controls the motor's direction by switching the phase sequence. Two, the control circuit. This sends commands to the contactors to switch the motor's movement forward or reverse. How a three-phase motor changes direction. A three-phase motor runs by receiving power through three separate wires called phases. The direction of the motor's rotation depends on the order in which these phases are connected. To reverse the motor's direction, we simply swap two of the three-phase wires. This changes the sequence of the electrical current flowing through the motor causing it to rotate in the opposite direction. In our project, we will use two contactors to control this phase swapping automatically. One contactor will connect the motor to run in the forward direction. The second contactor will reverse the motor's direction. However, both contactors should never be active at the same time otherwise, it could cause a short circuit. Let's start with the power circuit wiring. First, I connect the three-phase power supply to the input terminals of the first contactor. Then, I connect the output of the first contactor to the motor terminals. Now. For the second contactor, we need to swap two of the phase wires. For example, we can swap phase two and phase three. It doesn't matter which two phases you swap, and you can do this on either the input or output side of the second contactor. In this case, I swapped phase two and phase 3 at the contactor's output with this setup. When contactor 1 is active, the motor will run in the forward direction. When contactor 2 is active, the motor will run in the reverse direction because we swapped the two phases. Now, we must ensure that both contactors never activate at the same time, as this could create a short circuit, which is very dangerous. To prevent both contactors from activating simultaneously, we need an interlock system in the control circuit. The interlock ensures that when one contactor is active, the other contactor is automatically blocked. Even if I press the reverse start button, it won't activate the reverse contactor while the forward contactor is already running. Now that we have completed the power circuit wiring, let's move on to the control circuit. 
Let's break down this circuit diagram step by step. Before wiring a control circuit, we must first design and draw its electrical diagram. This schematic helps us carry out the wiring process more easily and accurately. In this case, we will analyze the forward reverse motor control circuit together. In this circuit, we use the electrical schematics of various components. These standardized schematics are universally recognized, allowing us to analyze control circuits efficiently worldwide. Fuse. This is the electrical symbol for a fuse, which is typically rated at 2A or 6A in control circuits. Its primary function is to protect the circuit from short circuits. Thermal Overload Relay This component safeguards the motor against overload. When it trips, the control circuit opens, stopping the motor. Normally Closed Push Button This is the schematic representation of a normally closed NC push button. Normally Open Push Button This symbol represents a normally open No Push Button. Contactor Auxiliary Contacts These are auxiliary contacts of a contactor. Each contactor typically has two auxiliary contacts, one normally open NO and one normally closed NC. Now that we are familiar with these schematics, let's analyze the control circuit step by step. In all electrical circuits, the first component used is the fuse. I connected one side of the fuse to one of the phase lines and the other side to the input of the thermal overload relay at terminal 95. After the bimetal relay, I used a normally closed stop push button. The output of terminal 96 of the bimetal relay is connected to the input of the start push button. Why did I place the stop push button in this position? So that whenever this button is pressed, it cuts off the entire control circuit, deactivating the active contactor. Next, I added the start push button. The output of the stop button is connected to the input of both the start push button and the normally open auxiliary contacts of both contactors. The output of the forward start button and the normally open auxiliary contact of the forward contactor, which serves as a holding circuit, is first connected to the input of the normally closed reverse contactor auxiliary contact. The output of this normally closed contact is then connected to the coil of the forward contactor. This contact acts as an interlock ensuring that when the reverse contactor is active, the forward contactor cannot be energized under any circumstances. Only when the stop button is pressed and this contact returns to its normally closed state will it allow current to reach the forward contactor coil. In the second part of this circuit, which controls the motor's reverse rotation, the reverse start push button and its holding auxiliary contact are connected to the input of the normally closed auxiliary contact of the forward contactor. The output of this normally closed contact is then connected to the coil of the reverse contactor. As explained earlier, this contact also acts as an interlock, ensuring that whenever the forward contactor is active, the reverse contactor cannot be energized. This prevents short circuits and ensures safe operation. Let's test this circuit together to make it more understandable. Initially, both contactors are inactive. First, I press the forward start push button, which activates the forward contactor. Its normally open auxiliary contact closes, creating a bypass path. This allows the current to continue flowing to the contactor coil 11 after the start button is released, ensuring that the contactor remains energized. 
In the reverse contactor circuit, we have used the normally closed auxiliary contact of the forward contactor. Since the forward contactor is now active, this auxiliary contact opens, ensuring that even if the reverse start button is pressed, the reverse contactor does not activate. This prevents a phase-to-phase -phase short circuit. To reverse the motor's direction, I first press the stop button, which deactivates the forward contactor. Then, I press the reverse start button, allowing the reverse contactor to activate safely. I have reinserted images of each required component so that we can demonstrate the wiring process on actual devices. This way, we can fully understand and remember the control circuit once and for all. By using real component images, we will visually map out the wiring connections step by step, ensuring a clear and practical learning experience. Let's proceed with the wiring process while referencing these images for a more hands-on understanding. 1. First, connect the output of the fuse to the input of the first thermal overload relay at terminal 95. 2. Then, connect the output of this relay from terminal 96 to the input of the second thermal overload relay. 3. Next, connect the output of the second bimetal relay to the input of the stop push button. 4. The output of the stop button is then connected to the inputs of the start push buttons and the normally open auxiliary contacts of both contactors. Now, let's move on to the forward and reverse control wiring. 5. Connect the output of the forward start button to the input of the normally closed auxiliary contact of the reverse contactor. Then, connect the output of this auxiliary contact to the coil of the forward contactor. 6. Similarly, for the reverse operation, connect the output of the reverse start button to the input of the normally closed auxiliary contact of the forward contactor. Then, connect the output of this auxiliary contact to the coil of the reverse contactor. At this stage, the main control wiring is complete. Now we just need to connect the holding circuits of each contactor. 7. Since we have already wired the inputs of both contactors auxiliary contacts, we now connect the output of the normally open auxiliary contact of the forward contactor to the input of the normally closed auxiliary contact of the reverse contactor. 8. The output of this contact is already connected to the forward contactor coil, so no additional wiring is needed. 9. We repeat the same process for the holding circuit of the reverse contactor. This completes the wiring setup, ensuring safe and reliable operation of the forward reverse motor control circuit. We have now completed a practical and highly useful video. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Please support the channel by subscribing and liking the video. It encourages us to create more educational content. If you have any questions or need clarification, feel free to leave a comment, and I will be happy to assist you in the best way possible. Looking forward to seeing you in the next practical video.